Now, in the next problem, I'm going to give another example of that kind of process. Okay? Let's see. Any questions regarding this example? Touching the piston but exerting no force on it. Okay? Everybody is important. In the question, everybody is important. Now heat is transferred to the gas, causing the piston to rise and to compress the spring until the volume inside the cylinder doubles. If the cross sectional area of the piston is 0.25 square meters, determine the final pressure inside the cylinder. Second one. The total work done by the gas, third one, the fraction of this work done against the spring to compress it. Now this is a spring uh, piston cylinder device. Let's draw the sketch. Remember, you need to draw uh, the property diagram and the state diagrams like this, either PV or TV in the exam, right? That, has, uh, that carries some points. All right, so now in this example, at the first instant, it says its volume is equal to 0 0.05 cubic meters, and the pressure is equal to 200 kilopascal, and this area is 1.25 square meters. Uh, what else? K is given, spring constant, 150 kilonewton per meter. That's it. Now, rather than finding the final pressure at once, I would like to uh, get an equation for the general phase. Now, let's say now this is the neutral state. Spring start compressing. Now, Piston is at somewhere in be between final and initial state. Let's say final state is somewhere here. As volume x2, uh, distance x2, this is x0. Now the piston is at somewhere x. And uh, it travels dx distance. The spring has compressed. And once it uh, compressed the spring, the spring starts giving a force on the Okay. Now, how can I obtain equation for pressure inside the cylinder? We did this once. Fine, fine. I need the general pressure P at any instant. Find the height. Find the height. Okay. Yeah. Now, now this the change is given. That is x, right? So, which system generally should I analyze here? Spring over. Which did we analyze? In the first chapter, we did that kind of problem. Analyze the piston. Very good. Analyze the piston. Yes? Look at the forces on the piston. What is the force applied on the downward direction? Yes. P times A. Very good. And you have uh, the atmospheric pressure, definitely, P A T M times A. And what is the uh, spring force? K X. K X. My group's law. And what is the other, other force? Uh, the weight of the piston, M G. Weight of the piston mg, right? And piston force actually we can write, uh, sorry, spring force actually we can write k x 
minus x naught. X naught is the initial. So if the initial is zero, that's k, right? Just now for now we can put x naught, x minus x naught. So if I can write the if I write the force balance towards the upward direction, p times a minus p a t m times a uh, minus m g minus f sorry k x minus x naught equals zero. Now p is equal to p sorry k uh, x minus x naught divided by a plus p a t m m g divided by a. Right? Does that make sense? Now, uh, what is there? Is it changing? Atmospheric pressure is that location is a constant. And mass of the piston? Constant. Area of the piston? Constant. So that, that term, the whole term is going to be a constant. So you can just put as C, right? So I can write P. Now, if I wanted to have the pressure volume relation, what can I do? <coughs> if I want to have a pressure volume relation, what I can what, what can I do? PV equals No, 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 no. Let's look at the equation. Okay. Now this is the pressure related with the distance travel. If I want to convert that into volume, what should I do? Multiplied by the area. Multiplied by the area. Right? Numerator and denominator. K. If I multiply the numerator, it's going to be V. That's the volume at that location, the arbitrary location, minus V naught, the initial volume, divided by A square, because I multiply both numerator and denominator, same term, plus C, P. Now, that's the pressure volume relation. Now, that is a what kind of relation? Hmm? Linear relation. Very good. It's a linear relation. Now, if it is a linear relation, uh huh, we can draw that. <coughs> okay. If you know that it is a linear relation, now this is any general case because I e take the equation for any general case. For any piston cylinder device connects with a spring, the pressure volume relation is what? It's linear, right? It's linear. Whatever the substance inside the system, no matter whatever the substance is, but the pressure volume relation is linear, right? Keep in mind. So I can draw, because I know that when x goes further and further from the x naught, volume increases, that's true, but about the pressure? Uh -huh. increases. Now volume increases, pressure increases. So this line slopes down, but this is uh, right? So if I know the initial pressure P1, initial volume V1, final pressure P2, initial pressure V2, we can get the work done. We don't need any spring constants, values, anything, but we need only P1, V1, P2, V2. It's done, right? Because we have that equation right here. That's the uh, area of a trapezoid, right? That's the area of a trapezoid. So now I can find the final pressure because I have a general equation, right? A general equation 
Now, if the volume doubles, what is that V? 2V0, right? 2 times V0. So you're planning 2 times V0, you know K, you know A, but you don't know C. Now what do you do? How do you find C? <coughs> That's what I said, every word of the problem is important. Uh, substitute for P1. Yes, very good. How do you do that? If you substitute for P1, that X is equal to X0. So that term goes away. Right? That term goes away. So C is equal to P1. Make sense? Every word is important. C is equal to P1. Can you believe it? Okay, this is the reason, right? This is the reason. Let me have one minute. P, P1, I put P1. Pressure at the state 1 is equal to K V1. I can put V1 is equal to what? Oh, X1. X1 is equal to X0. The initial state. And problem says it's touching the piston but exerting no force in it. On it. That means no K exposed. Right? You have just only that atmospheric pressure times plus the mass of the piston. So that's our constant C. So that term is X0 minus X0. So it's gone. Plus C. So C is equal to P1. Does it make sense? Make sense? I guess that's just only a spring not doing any work at the beginning, right? Yeah, I mean, the spring does not apply a force at the beginning, right? Now, in this case, what does the work on the spring? Or well, spring does the work on the gas, or gas does the work on the spring? Gas does the work on the piston, or spring, right? OK, now next, next third one. Now, I gave you two answers, right? First and second, right? Because total work done is the area under the curve. Pressure to can be the equation, right? Third one. The Fraction of this work done against the spring to compress it. Right. Now, by asking that question, you should, uh, it implies that there's some fraction that the piston does on something else. What is that? Imagine the system without the spring. That's a big mass. Gravity. It does work against that gravity and the atmospheric pressure. Right? Without the piston, what kind of, what, sorry, without the spring, what kind of process is this? Constant pressure process. Now if I, what is that? P1 is equal to what? C, right? This is equal to C. Now C is equal to what? P A T M plus that term, right? Now if, if, if there, this spring were not here, the system behaves on the constant pressure process. That constant pressure is equal to what? PATM plus MG over A. Right? So this amount of work under this straight horizontal line is done against the atmospheric pressure plus the mass. Make sense? So just the the part of the triangle itself is the work done on the spring. The spring the yeah. the gas. It's not the gas. It's done on the spring. This every all the work is done by the gas, right? But this part is done on the spring. This part is done on the atmospheric surroundings. Make sense? So you can have, you can have get the answer for the question too. All right. Make sense? Any questions? Any questions? So whenever you are saying a system with a spring, that's going to be a linear relation with the pressure and volume, no matter whatever the substance inside is. Make sense? The steam, gas, whatever. Right. Any questions? All right, next, uh, move on to the same thing that we did uh, in chapter two, energy balance of a closed system. Now, energy balance for any system is delta E is equal to E in minus E out. 
Now again, what are the energies that can cross the boundary of the force system? What is the total energy change? What is the total energy change? All right, yes. Delta KE, kinetic energy change plus delta PE plus delta U equals whatever the energy comes in and goes out. What are the energies comes in and goes out? Energy transactions. Very good, Q in minus Q out plus W in minus W out plus for a closed system we don't have mass. So I'm not going to write that. Okay? Mass uh, energy transfer not occur with the mass because there are some mass transfer. For a station system I can reduce the equation into du or delta u is equal to Q in minus Q out plus W in minus W out. And I can uh, rewrite this in terms of Q in net. I did this, I explained this, so I'm just finding it again. Out net, and without this subscript, I can write delta U is equal to Q minus W. Right? So we need to follow the sign convention. What is the sign convention for U and Q and W? What are sign convention for Q? Whatever heat comes into the system is positive. Very good. Whatever the heat goes out of the system, negative. negative. Whatever work comes into the system, <coughs> negative. negative goes out of the system. Positive. So follow the sign. That's the. That's very important. Okay. Otherwise, you get weird answers. Let's go to the example five. What, what is this? Four. Oh, that's four. So. Example five. Okay, we have how many minutes? Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. What <coughs> initially saturated vapor at four bar fills a close rigid container. Okay, close rigid container. The water is heated until its temperature is four hundred degrees centigrade. For the water determined, the heat transfer in kilojoules per kilogram, kinetic and potential energy changes are ignored. Okay, so system, <coughs> system in this case is water and sketches. Now we have a system with uh, crystal, uh, saturated cross rigid content. Okay, cross rigid content. And uh, so you don't have moving boundaries. So what kind of precious uh, process would be there? Constant volume. It's a rigid content, right? Once you say it, it's a rigid content, nobody says it's constant volume. It's constant volume, implied by the term. Okay, so proc uh, what is conditions. <coughs> it's a constant <coughs> volume process. Or oh, isochoric process. Okay, so now under the sketches we need to draw PV or TV diagrams. So let's draw TV diagram first. What is the substance? The system is C, right? We need to have that envelope, right? Initial cases we didn't because it is a gap. So that envelope is there. So initial state at four bar, four bar is equal to how many kilopascals? Very good, 400, 400 kilopascals. And initial state at saturated vapor, right? So initial state is right here. And uh, its temperature is, uh, water is heated until its temperature is 400. Now, how do you find this temperature right here? Temperature. temperature. What is that temperature? What is that? No, I mean just ask. What is that? Saturated temperature at that pressure. Right? That's what <coughs> the answer is expected. Okay, T sat at 400 kilopascal. Now, you can find that temperature. Probably that uh, should be what? Can you tell me the number? Oh, 
144. Okay, now the second state has a higher pressure than that. So we know that since the, since the process is constant volume, that should go on this line. But how do you find it is above or below that line? Because the given temperature at second state it is 400 is above. So right here is the second state. Now let's draw PV diagram quickly. If I draw the PV diagram, PV, now how do I draw the <coughs> constant pressure line? It's a horizontal line, right? So it's a 400 kilopascal horizontal line. Saturated vapor point is right here. That's right. So it's a, again constant, uh, constant volume process. So it's either here or there. Now, if I draw a constant temperature line which goes through saturated liquid point and stays same and goes down, what is the value of that line? What is the temperature of that line? T sets. Very good. It's 144. Now, 400 line is above or below? It's above that, right? Yes. So 400 constant temperature line. So the second state is like here. So that's how the process looks like on a PV diagram. This is PV, that's P. Now, it's just a matter of finding, we need to find the heat transfer, right? I don't know, the time? Okay. Try to use delta U equals Q minus W. And what is W in this case? It's zero. Why? Constant volume process. Constant volume process, that's go to zero. So Q is equal to delta U. Okay? Since the mass is not given, you can find the specific heat transfer. So delta U is equal to M times U2 minus <coughs> U2 is equal to the U is that state, and we will try to find those. We will try to find at home. I will do the rest of the problem. Okay, so we have one week for the exam. Okay, so get ready yourself. If you have any questions, just send me an email anytime. Set an appointment and meet me, okay?